Today, I'm going to share with you three game-changing parenting hacks to let your children be themselves and follow rules. If you have a sensitive child, if you have a neurodivergent child, I have an autistic child, these, these YouTube videos are especially for you because for them, things are a little bit different. The things that you hear online of do this instead of this, do that, that, that doesn't work for kids on the spectrum, for sensitive kids, for neurodivergent kids, or for strong-willed kids. I am Marcela Collier. I'm a certified parenting coach and founder of HIC Parenting Education Agency. My team of coaches and I have served 14,151 parents in coaching break free from reactivity, like yelling and, and, and whooping their kids, timeouts, bringing peace to themselves and raise secure children with peace and accountability. If that's the kind of thing that you want for your family, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel. And let's start with these three game-changing parenting hacks to let our children be themselves and follow rules. So number one, let's talk about rules specifically. If you want your children to be themselves while follow rules, make sure that your rules are age appropriate. I was helping a parent last week who told me my daughter would not say sorry to sister. When she does something to sister, she would not say sorry. And it is a rule in my house that when you do something to someone, you go and say sorry. And I say, okay, that, that's, a great, that's a great value that you want to teach your children to take ownership over their behaviors. How old is your daughter? <laughs> My daughter is two years old. Okay, let's start, from, let's start from the start. Is this an age-appropriate expectation that a two-year-old is going to be like, mom, you're right. I don't think I communicated my feelings and needs appropriately, and I heard my brother's feelings. I'm going to regulate my emotions, take a few deep breaths, and I'm going to go and say sorry to him. That won't happen <laughs> because a two-year-old is not able to access those very advanced executive functioning skills to, to, to allow her to be calm enough to say sorry. So be at, pay attention to age-appropriate behaviors. So I don't teach her to say sorry. I'm not saying not to teach her. Let's review the expectation that as soon as she does what, as soon as she does the misbehavior or the thing that she, you know, she pushed brother down. As soon as she doesn't, then she's expected to say sorry. That won't happen because your daughter is too. So you have to work on helping her calm down, helping her feel regulated. And then from that connection and that regulation and that safety that she sends from you, she's going to be a lot more willing to listen to you and you together, you modeling what, how it looks like, you will work on the skill. So that might look like you modeling to her how to say sorry to brother, not expecting her to say sorry right away, but for her to, to start absorbing the lesson. So when she is developmentally ready, she's going to use it. So it's not about not teaching them. It's about not obligating them to do something that they are not developmentally ready and able to co comp comprehend. Compre comprehend. <laughs> I, I have a, I'm a second language learner. Sometimes some words are that hard to, to pronounce. Comprehend. Okay, I think I said it right. <laughs> Did I say it right? Game changer number two, to let our child be themselves while following our rules. So number two is considering their needs when creating rules. I was helping a mom of neurodivergent twins. One of them was autistic. The other one, I don't know. The, the diagnosis, but her expectation was that I just want them to have this memory from childhood of the family sitting around the table and eating dinner together and talking about the day while we eat dinner. 
I want to build that memory in them. But my twins, they would not, I mean, they would go to the table and eat a little bit and they, they want to get off the table and they would, and it, they just don't want to stay. And it, she was living so much power struggles trying to get her five-year-old twins, one of them autistic, to stay still for the remaining, for the entire time the family was on the table. Let's consider the needs. She has an autistic son who has sensory seeking needs. He's bouncy. <laughs> his attention span is really limited. And of course, he's going to get really wiggly and handsy by just waiting for dad and mom to be done talking about the day and finishing dinner. That's not age appropriate and does not, that does not consider the needs of the child. So it makes sense to me the why of those power struggles. <laughs> so let's talk about how to create rules that, yes, honor our family values, but at the same time, honor our children's needs. That's when we start parenting your, our children in a way that they are allowed to be themselves and following our rules by modifying our rules to their needs. So... She came to a realization through, through parenting coaching that she needed to develop a different system, that maybe it was more fast paced, that she would maybe she would lower the expectation. And the system that she developed was, we are going to do buffet style kind of dinner. So she went from, this is your plate, this is your plate, this is your plate to, I'm going to set everything on the table and we're going to grab from different places and we're going to mismatch and we're going to have exchange. That's a lot of more engaging for the autistic one who has those sensory seeking needs, those like sensory seeking meaning that he's, he wants to be on the move, on the action. She was not that, um, that rigid anymore about them having to be there until everybody's done. And um, number three, she created a different environment for her children in a way that uh, they are able to, to participate in the family discussion without feeling like they are just listening to adult conversation. So they started talking about the children's day. They started asking them questions about things of the, the topic of interest of the autistic one. If I'm autistic, and if you ask me about my topic of interest, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk and talk and talk. So she used that as a tool to meet the need and value and honor, and honor the family value of eating around the table, considering accommodated to her particular family dynamic, considering that she has kids who are on the spectrum. So that's how you go from triggered and like, ah, everything feels like a struggle to really having a family that runs and moves because everybody understands each other's needs. Now you're like, Marcela, I don't know. I try to understand my child, but it's just so tough. I end up yelling. I have something that will really help you. This mother that I was telling you about, she's one of our coaching clients, and 14,151 of our clients did this free class that you can access right now in hicparenting.com, hicparenting.com. I'm going to leave a, a card here on top on the description and on the description of this video. And on this class, I share with you the parenting with understanding system of needs to raise our children with a lot more peace from the understanding of their needs. That will help us break free from reactivity and raise emotionally healthy children. To access this class, again, it's in the description below. You can have free access right now. Number three thing, number three game-changing parenting hack to let your children be themselves and following your rules. And this has to do on how the rule is set up. Rules provide a range of freedom. And I want to stop there because if I think about it, 
my parents' rules to me were not providing any range of freedom. They sounded like police officers following me all the time, telling me what not to do. Don't do this. Don't do that. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. I didn't even know what I was allowed to do. (laughs) It was so discouraging for me and that fueled power struggles. Think about a rule that provides a range of freedom as how it works in the real world. If you go to the store and you, and you look at the, at the door of target or Walmart Ross, the first thing that you see at their, at their door is a rule. Our, our, our business hours, the time that you can come here are from eight to nine. Come from 8 to 9, anytime you're welcome, you can come to our store and shop. That's a range of freedom. What about how confusing it would be if it would have been, don't come at 9. <laughs> don't come at midnight. So what? When, when can I come? Don't come at 8 a.m. So when can I come? That's what we're doing with our kids. We're just telling them, don't do, don't do, don't come, don't do, stop, stop, stop. And they're like, okay, so what can I do? They feel controlled and they push back even harder. So let's review these three game-changing parenting hacks to let our children be themselves while honoring our rules. Number one, age-appropriate rules. Number two, consider the needs when creating the rules. Considering to accommodate the rule to your family dynamic and needs. And number three, create rules that provide a range of freedom. I want to tell you that this is not intuitive. For me, it took parenting coaching to fully integrate this in my family. You are doing great. And I'm very curious. Let me know in the comments which one of these three you can start doing today. Number one, age appropriate. Number two, considering the needs. Number three, providing that range of freedom. Tell me one, number one, two, or three. Let me know in the comments. And would you share this video with a friend, with your spouse, with your sister, with your mom? Let them know, hey, this video helped me. I'm sure it will help you. Send it right now before you leave. Put the pause button. Send it right now. And thank you so much for watching. I want to tell you that it only takes understanding of yourself and of your children's needs to transform your parenting. That's Parenting with Understanding. I'll see you next time.